Hello out there all you geographers and welcome to another how-to video. In this video I'll be showing you how to make a choropleth map using a program called Data Wrapper which is really good especially for senior geography. I'm going to be using data from the Australian Bureau of Statistics 2021 census data so I'll show you the population data I'm going to be using for my choropleth map. Right so I'm going to go on census and then I'm going to go find census data by topic and then I'm going to go population and then this is the data I'm going to be using so I'm going to be looking at the population of each state and territory in Australia that was collected in the 2021 census now I'm going to show you data wrapper so I just go on Google type in data wrapper and it's the first link there um, you do need to have an account, um, so I'm already signed in, I've just signed in um, using my account. You can sign in using your Google details or Microsoft details, it's very easy. So you'll have all your saved maps in your dashboard. You can see I've got some recently used Australian ones here. And to make a new map you just go create new and you can go map. You can also use data wrapper for charts and tables, but I'm just going to make a choropleth map. You can see there's types of maps you can make, but we're going choropleth map. So I'm going to click on that one like so. And you'll see here there are four steps. And I'm going to show you in particular at the end of the fourth step how to put it in a Word document. So it looks really nice as a figure in your assessment task. Um, now you can search for pre-generated maps. Uh, and their data wrappers collection of the maps they have is very extensive and very impressive. So not only do they have maps of all these regions, but for instance, if I want to type in, let's say, Brisbane, for example. I can do all the suburbs in Brisbane. It'll have that map for me. And it'll pop up over here so I can have a preview of it before I actually choose my map. So you, as you can see, that's a very comprehensive map. Um, I can even look at maps of Haiti. I can look at all the different states and regions in Haiti. I can do districts or provinces from Laos. So you can see the range of maps they have is quite extensive. If you type in Australia, for example, you can see there are a ton of maps related to Australia, but I want these states. So I'm going to click on this map here, and that's going to come up with the map that I need. All right, so once you're happy with your map, you click on Proceed. Next, you need to add the data. So you'll see um, that there is a pre-generated Excel spreadsheet uh, that they've embedded in their website here, and this is where you put your data. So I'm going to do that now using my census data from the ABS. So I need to find the Australian Capital Territory. So that's that figure there. I'm just going to press Control C for copy and Control V for paste. I'm going to deliberately leave out Lord Howe Island. So I'll show you what to do with that next. So next I need New South Wales, which is going to be up here. Just to take over 8 million people. Now, Northern Territory is next, 230,000, so I'm just doing Control c and Control v The next is Queensland. You'll see my Choropleth map is already generating itself. The colours are already generating themselves automatically as I'm going. South Australia is next. Put that data in. Tasmania. So after that, then I've got Victoria, six and a half million, and then I've got Western Australia. And again, your data might be completely different, you might be doing a completely different topic, but that is how you put your data in, using a trusted source. Okay. You can also upload like pre-generated Excel files too, which is really useful. Okay, so now that I've put all my data in, I'm happy with that. Uh, you can also add a column into this part of the spreadsheet too. I'm gonna scroll down and click proceed. So now I need to check just carefully that everything is named correctly in the columns, which is fine, because I want names of places in this column and I want values or numbers in that column there. And then I've checked it, and it's just saying you haven't done anything for Lord Howe Island, which is fine. Okay, now this is where you make the real money. Okay, you'll see it came up with some colors there, but now it's coming up with black and white, and I'll show you the three steps of actually representing your data now. So there's refine, annotate, and layout. So the first thing I'm actually gonna do is 
put in a heading for my key. So I'm going to call it population 2021. Now I get to select my color scale. Uh, personally, I mainly go the greens. So I'm going to do greens there. You'll see here, uh, my key here is kind of one continuous bar. I don't want that. I want to change it to steps. That's going to look much nicer. So you can see I've got different steps here. Now, obviously my data is quite complex because my data is in the millions. So that's why my numbers look quite complex here. I'll show you, can show you a simple example later in the video. You can also make your data more specific. So for instance, I only have five steps on my key at the moment, but you can see I'm increasing the amount of steps. I'm going to have eight steps because there are eight states and territories in Australia. And uh, you can see now I've kind of made my map more specific by adding in more steps on my key. You can also customize the ranges as well if you don't like that. So for instance, my min might be 200,000 and my max will have to be over eight and a bit million. So I might make it nine million. But your data should be automatically scaled for you. So you don't quite need to do that. You could be way more specific than I'm going to be. It's just like evenly spread out my numbers. Anyway, moving on. Um, I definitely want to show a colored legend. I'm happy with values. I'm happy with the number that they're in as well. Um, now for appearance, I'm going to remember how we left Lord Howe Island with nothing. So I'm going to hide regions without data. So that's going to make my map look a bit nicer as well. You can change uh, the appearance of your map as well, but I'm really leaving that alone. Um, and then I want to click proceed. So here you can add in like a description. If you want people to download your map, if you're putting it online, you can do that. You can add all these other things about your map. All right, the next thing here, I definitely want to have a download image options. This is kind of just your layout. That's fine. You can add like dark mode, which is pretty cool, but I don't need to do that because I'm putting it on an X, uh, a Microsoft document. Okay. So now that you've clicked publish, you can publish it online or you can download it as a picture. That's certainly what I'm going to do. And that file will download after I press download image. So you can see this is a really valuable and, and useful tool for making Coropleth maps because you can just put in your data and everything's automatic for you. All right, now I'm actually gonna put it, say, in my assessment task. So I'm going to copy the whole thing, can open up a Word document to show you what it looks like now. I'm gonna paste it. Let's say this is my assessment task. Now I don't wanna have this thing that says created by a data wrapper here. So I'm gonna go picture format after clicking on the picture. And then I'm going to go crop like so. And I'm just going to get rid of that, but still leave Tasmania intact. All right, so I've cropped that. The next thing I want to do is I definitely want to put a border on this image as well. So I'm going to go picture format, picture borders, and I'm just going to choose black. So there's a nice border around my image now. You can change the size of it like so as well. It's pretty easy. All right, the next thing I need to give it a figure title. So let's say this is the first figure in my assessment task. It's figure one. If it's the third, it might be figure three and we'll say population of Australian states and territories. And then we need a source as well, like all good geographers has. So the source is the Australian Bureau of, I'm going to spell it correctly, statistics. And then that data was collected in 2021. So I'm gonna put it like that. The final thing I'm gonna do is reduce my spacing to zero. So everything's all nice and neat and together. So that's what it should look like in your assessment task. So this is a really easy uh, and very clear Coropleth map. I can see which states and territories have more people than others and I can compare them as well. So guys, that is how you make a Coropleth map using a program called Data Wrapper. Good luck with your geographical studies and I'll see you next time.